Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Perch Perspectives. So we're here today with Jeffrey Tobias, the Managing Director of the Strategy Group. Jeffrey, I understand you're also an adjunct professor at AGSM, right? I am. Yes. Adjunct professor and fellow at the Australian Graduate School of Management. Okay. That's awesome because we want to pick your brain today and we want to talk okay. about generative AI. So do you want to take us through a bit of the history of generative AI and how did it start? Yeah. AI is not new at all. So when I, I think to my degree in computer science, I actually taught AI at university to computer science students. And at that point, the problem was that not much of it could be realized because computing power was so slow. The cost per megabit of data was so high. The cost of computing power was so high and it just was impractical. But if you look there to what AI was, it captured a number of different strands. So one strand would be facial recognition, for example. So when you're coming back from overseas and you come to the passport thing and it looks at your face and recognizes you, well, if you think about it, it's impossible to capture every possible face, every possible human in the entire world and store it in a database, right? So AI does the best guess of thinking, well, it looks as close as I can get to you, so it's probably you until someone says that. No, it's like your voice recognition was very topical at the time. How do you recognize voice? So now we're used to it with Siri. And we're used to it with Siri because, you know, we've got competing power in our phone, which we had nothing like that competing power in the largest computers that we could build. So if you look at the branches of AI, then it was, you know, robotics, it was voice recognition, it was facial recognition, it was personal assistance too. So generative AI as such didn't exist. It wasn't, it wasn't a branch. Analytics wasn't a branch at that point too. But my point to you is that this concept of having some level of intelligence through technology is not new. And then if you think about, we went through the growth of the personal computer and then it got a bit better. Then Apple brought it up, Siri, Amazon's brought it up, Alexa, and focused heavily on voice recognition so you can talk to it, and speech, natural language processing, which is also great. Nothing really in video, nothing really in really delving into concept creation. And then if you look, you know, over the past few years, the progress of AI, a lot of it has been around analytics. So you look at the large corporates, every large, you know, Woolworths or Coles or universities where they have to try and look to predict what's going to happen one, two, three years out to the benefit of the organization or, you know, in the next microsecond. Up to probably a year or two ago, the focus was on analytics as being the focus on it. And then, of course, but then it comes up with ChatGPT. and they went, oh my gosh, this is some branch called generative AI, which sounds very sexy. No one really knows what it means, but it's absolutely cool, especially at a dinner party. <laughs> um, and so, you know, is it new news? It's, it's really taking voice. It's really taking the concept of the personal assistant which was back in the 70s and making it real and then taking conversational, the ability for a conversational language and making that real and putting all that together, throwing in all the knowledge that was able to be thrown in, which wasn't able to be done before. And now, of course, you know, we're riding a wave of generative AI. But I mean, my point to you is that, you know, people think this is new news. It's, it's not. But it's really driven by the, you know, the low cost of being power and the low cost of memory, which is unparalleled in terms of being able to do all this. Does that make sense? Wow. Yeah, that's really interesting. So now I'm keen to understand how do you see this impacting the employment market? Do you see it creating barriers? Do you see it creating shortcuts? Keen to know your views. Yeah, you mean, will I have a job or not? <laughs> you can go that way. Well, you can go there. Okay. okay. And look at it, the answer is I don't think anyone knows. I think we're back. If you cast your mind back to when the internet came So you, I vividly remember in 2000, the view was in five years' time, there'll be no newspapers, there'll be no mail at all, there'll be no shopping centers, there'll be no shops, because everything will be bought online. And you used to kind of be online, all that shop. Well, 
you know, we're now 23 years later. And while, yes, we have the decline of these things, and it's true, while we have the decline of in person shopping, it's true, there's still these things and lots of shops taking place. So you know, people, I think, misjudge the timing of how long change takes. I mean, at the moment, we're seeing rapid change in, you know, new ways of using generative AI, you know, plugins, voice on a daily basis. You know, now, where will that end up? <clears throat> I don't know as much as you do. Will things stabilize and take longer than we think to change in the market? Absolutely. Are we going to see call centers in the organizations vanish next year? <clears throat> Absolutely not. However, I think there's a lot of discussion now about what sort of jobs will be impact. So, yeah, if you're, if you're a council worker out in the field running the grass, will generate a good job away, unlikely, some of them don't the grass. If, however, you're a knowledge worker in an organization where generative variable or any sort of thing can potentially impact your role, will it have an impact? Probably. In the same way as if you think about robotics, then how is the car manufactured? It used to be you know, hundreds of people on a car, and it's now a small number of people on a car, and robots. So will we see impact any knowledge worker type roles? I think absolutely. You know, you can start thinking about the obvious, like, Call centers, for example. If I'm, I think we're all frustrated by calling up someone. I mean, I had this instance yesterday. I put, I hung up, I pressed the button on the phone, thinking that was the worst customer experience I could have had by talking to someone in a big bank that was totally useless. His answer to my question was go to a branch. And I'm thinking, in this day and age, you, you seriously in a call center telling me that the way to solve my problem is go to a branch. So if you think about the gap to be filled and the job to be done, that would be it's pain and gain. Yeah, that's an obvious one. Well, now, you know, if, it's interesting if you listen to the, the discussion from Yuval Harari, Yuval Harari, great sapiens and so on. He has an interesting perspective on this. His perspective yes. is that core sensors will, will vanish over time but what you'll need is, you know, cybersecurity people to make sure that your company, that the, the call center that's calling your call center is in fact legitimate and they're, they're not hatching up a crime between the two call centers as they talk to each other. So I think you can think of many opportunities where knowledge work will be displaced. But again, you know, are people, again, one difference is that if you're in a call center today and you're made redundant, you go get another job in a call center. If you're in a call center and call centers are going away and you're made redundant, what do you do? There aren't any other call centers. So you've got to retrain. So retraining, I think we'll see a lot of retraining over the next 10 years of people where their job has been affected one way or the other and they can't just get another one and say that they've got to actually retrain. Yeah. So... You know, knowledge workers, so call centers, so it's important. Anywhere where you're from, you've got to deal with someone, you know, at the other end of a computer, at the other end of a file, at the other end of anything, where you're looking for information and that information is actually readily available and can be delivered through something like generative AI in a meaningful way. But there are other uh, opportunities where it's not about job, it's about value, where is value going to be created? So, as you know, we're discussing the opportunity of having a companion in an age care setting. You know, people get old, their friends die, they become lonely, they become depressed, and their the longevity increases very rapidly. So, could you, for example, have a, uh, a robot, perhaps, or even a, a person on a screen become your, your friend and mm-hmm. you can talk? You can engage with them and they get to know you and you play games, maybe they read books to you. I mean, if you think about that opportunity, that's huge. So that's creating new opportunities. But it comes with a risk. You know, the risk, for example, instance where you get to know the, uh, the generative variable opportunity, 
and they're talking to you and they're getting to understand you and you're talking about how lonely you are and you're talking about how no one visits you and no one cares for you. And the result of the preliminary and technology is that maybe you should quit suicide because it's not worth living. So one has to think about, well, okay, we're not going to get to that point. And maybe that is the logical outcome, but it's obviously not the outcome you want. So I think there are going to be a lot of knowledge word jobs that are impacted. And obviously, in the same way as the internet has displaced many traditional roles and has created new ones, as in the same way as the Industrial Revolution displaced many old roles and created new ones. Okay, thank you. So you briefly mentioned risks. When you when you talked about this, for example, this AI companion tool, mm-hmm. but I'm keen to think a bit about if a company decides to implement generative AI, what in a general way, what risks do you see coming? Look again, I, I was in, in a, a training session for the Australian School of Management just last week. We had about 35 executives, in, and I asked how many of you using generative. And a number of them said, our company is blocking the user. Oh, wow. So we can't actually access ChatGPT. That's okay. And you think back again to the of the internet, when the internet started to become a value to be able to find things on. Companies did exactly the same. Every time users said, no, 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 it's too risky. We're going to block it, you know. And over time, obviously, that hung well. And, you know, if you turn the internet off in most large corporate state then they're dying. I mean, what's a, what's a bank today? It's a, it's a big electronic box and stuff. So I think the risks of what we'll do to is as, you know, should we use a short? I think they will go away. It's going to be calculate. You know, do I stop using calculate? Because I want to make sure you can do long division. Well, good. <laughs> and maybe you'll lose those long division skills. Maybe but you're going to come up with an answer much faster and much more efficiently and much more precise than the calculate. So I think, you know, we'll find that the, the risks, I think, are, you know, pretty obvious. I mean, I'm now, you know, to, the risks of today, certainly, I mean, I'm now conversing to Jeff GP, saying things like, would you please do this for me? Or I'd be grateful if you could. And thank you so much, you know, and do you understand this, you know? And of course, the, what Purple Hour has done, they made it very conversational. So when you say, you know, could you please do this? The church ESC comes back, CPT comes back and says, sure, I can do that for you. So you think, okay, great. Well, let's, let's just keep the conversation going. So that, of course, brings up huge numbers of risks. How do I know the political leadings of the, of the person talking to me? I like, I'm talking, we're talking, we're talking, we're conversing, and, and I'm asking questions around, I don't know, politics or whatever. And I'm getting, I'm getting a point of view. And where does that point of view come from? Who do I know that I'm actually conversing to? Am I conversing to someone in the next building in my suburb? I'm conversing to someone halfway around the world in, in a bunker somewhere in the of some country. I don't know. So, yeah, over time, I think a lot of those risks will, be, will surface. You know, there's a lot of discussion at the moment around legislation. You know, countries are trying to go, do we legislate, do we not? Do we legislate to it on? I think legislation will definitely come in, but I think we're not going to see this innovation, innovation will continue. So there'll be some form of legislation because, again, if my chatbot's talking to your chatbot, <laughs> you know, we're at the beach somewhere because I was talking to each other, how do we know what we're saying, what they're saying, you know, what, they're, what they're cooking up? So I think there'll be risks that we haven't encountered before. As well as the two, as the obvious ones. How do we use it? Should we use it? Should we not use it? Where's that data going? Is it going to be clear in the sky? Is it not? Yeah, there's, there's obvious risks today, but I think there'll be new ones that surface over time as this whole industry matures. Wow, that's a very interesting point. Okay, thank you very much for your time today, Jeffrey. Very interesting to know all of your insights. You're obviously very knowledgeable in this area. So stay tuned for more information around generative AI. It's a pleasure, Martha. Always, always fun to chat. <laughs> Thank you.